the East Fjords, the road furthest from Iceland's capital Reykjavik. A place where small fishing towns are the biggest settlements and the majestic fjords are far off from the usual tourist destinations. Visit one of my favorite parts of Iceland. Welcome to the East Fjord. Hello, little town. This is the place where we're gonna stay the night. And there was actually this music festival that just ended today. So we will see if we can see some proof of that, or maybe there is still some music. Remains to be seen. Borga Fjordu Aestri calls itself the fjord of hundred people and thousand elves. Indeed, the little village Bakagerdi, one of the biggest settlements on the fjord, has only 99 inhabitants. But every summer it hosts Breitslan, one of Iceland's most well-known music festivals that had Emiliana Turini, Berlin Sebastian and Damien Rice as headliners in the past. That's the balcony from our room. Another attraction of the village is more hidden, literally. Bakagerdi is the legendary home of the elves, whose queen is said to reside in the Alphaborg, the castle of the elves. A small hill with a wonderful panoramic view is located in the middle of the town. This is where the queen of the East Fjords elves lives. Bakagerdi has a breathtaking surrounding with countless hiking opportunities to enjoy nature. But finally also a hotel that I can highly recommend. Some rooms and parts of Blaubjörg Guesthouse were still under construction when we visited, but the restaurant and the views from the room we got were one of a kind. My biggest recommendation that I unfortunately didn't take any videos of, try the Plokfiskur in the restaurant, a traditional Icelandic fish dish. It was the best we had in all of Iceland. Yesterday when we arrived here, it was super, super cold. Um, like I was freezing as much as I have not been freezing on this journey so far. But today the sun shines, at least here. That's not a promise because you can just turn around the next fjord and the sun might be gone. So yeah, that's how Iceland is. And um, we're having a quite short distance today we're driving literally now to places where we have hotels or places to stay because everything is so booked so we don't have that much of choice where we're going we basically go where there's accommodation We are going to a place now where we hopefully will see some puffins and it's this very famous birds that are kind of iconic for Iceland. So they are actually a must see and I hope we will be lucky because I actually don't really know if it's still nesting season. I only know that the place that we are going to is supposed to be one of the best ones to see the little puffins. Here we are, that's the puffin parking, I guess. Hi. 
Hafner Holmi is one of the best and easiest to reach places in all of Iceland to watch the famous puffins. At the newly built Hafnahus, the Harbour House, there is a nice cafe and you can enjoy art exhibitions and an excellent view over the surroundings. Hafnaholmi is not only a tourist destination, but the quaint little harbour is still functioning as a small fishing marina. And if you are lucky, the local fishermen will just come back with their catches when you are walking by the harbour to see the puffins. Wow! They huge! Wow! And that's the travel partner up there who refuses to go to the puffins. He goes to a cafe instead. Hafner Holmi offers perfect facilities to get close to the birds without disturbing them much or damaging their burrows. Around 10,000 pairs of puffins are set to nest here from mid-April to mid-August. There is a shelter and wooden platforms that allow you to get close to the little fun guys. Indeed so close that you even can see their poop that is all over the place. Puffins are monogamous. They are usually made for life and a couple can stay together for over 20 years. With 8 to 10 million puffins inhabiting the island, Iceland is home to more than 60% of the world's entire Atlantic puffin population. This fact made Iceland the puffin watching capital of the world. Bird watchers and scientists from all over the globe come to Iceland to see and study the species. In Icelandic, the puffins are called Lundi and they are kind of a national symbol for the Icelanders. Wow, these little puffins were so much nicer than I thought. I have to admit that seeing the puffins would not have necessarily been something on my to-do list for Iceland, because I'm actually not that big a fan of all this animal tourism. But even better that we stayed at this village yesterday and I guess already being here in this village we had basically no other choice than seeing them and coming here would otherwise have been a waste. And actually I can highly recommend to do this. It was really really nice. We continued our ride on Route 94, which was maybe not the most spectacular ride we had done so far, but the scenery was very peaceful and we enjoyed our ride in the morning sun. So guys, we have some decisions to take soon because the weather is so good today and I want to make at least one more detour here on the East Fjords, meaning I want to ride into another fjord and I think most of the fjords here are kind of like one-way roads, so you ride in and ride out and I would actually prefer a nice gravel road with not so many people, so we will see if we are lucky and find that. Sometimes, just sometimes, the things you wish for become reality. On this day, they did. So we're going into Mjörfjordo now. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, probably not. But um, it's a one-way road, so we have to ride in and back the same way. And actually we have already seen a lot of fjords, so we will see if this one is really worth it. But um, I think the road here is already a great start and like always I'm curious. The mountain ranges that separate Moifjordur from the neighboring fjords Nordfjordur and Seydisfjordur and that you traverse provide shelter. And particularly good weather. According to the locals, Mjöfjordur is one of the sunniest places on the East Fjords. 
But for us, the little mountain ride before dropping down to the fjord over several hairpins was the surprise of the day. Riding into this fjord so far is absolutely stunning. Crazy beautiful views here. Wow, there are even hairpins here. Not so many of those to be found in Iceland so far. I think only one that we did yesterday. And look down there, we see the fjord. Absolutely beautiful. Here along the fjords are all these little sites or historic things like this old ship here that was stranded here. And um, yeah, so you as well have some things to look at besides of the sun and stunning nature. An American vessel dated back to World War II, stranded on the edge of Moifjordur. 70 years of tides have been taking their toll, but the structure is still recognizable. I can't believe how lucky we are and really how beautiful this is. I really think it's one of my favorite rides so far. Um, look how crazy close we are to the water. I wonder if this whole road is flooded sometimes in bad weather because it's so close. It's really, really spectacular to ride here. From the start of the gravel road to the only little settlement along the fjord, it is about 30 kilometers one way. Incorporating the Icelandic word for narrow, Mjör, Mjöfjordur, lives up to its name throughout its 18 km length. The fjord is so incredibly beautiful that I can only refer to it as a hidden treasure that took us by surprise. Brekkuhorp is a small fishing village with just a few houses. The first cold storage warehouse in Iceland was built here in 1895. Besides of the harbour, Brekkubor has a church, a campground and a cafe. Today is a very good day. It's my travel partner's birthday and to celebrate the day, we're not going to only have one waffles, but in all of our time riding together for the first time, two waffles. It's gonna be a birthday waffle. Thank you. Enjoy. That's the birthday waffle. Yeah. Now we will see. From the town you can continue the ride along the fjord. The road is getting smaller, leads you along some lovely small waterfalls and eventually takes you to a very special place of Iceland's east. So this fjord is a dead end road and it turned out that the end of this dead end here is the most eastern point of Iceland. So here we are, most eastern point. This full ride into the fjord here was so breathtaking beautiful. I can't even wait to ride up the mountain again. The good news when riding from Moifjord to a back direction with the bigger paved connection routes, not only are you doing all the awesome riding again, you also have a stunning view on the waterfall along the way.
So this is, and I think my travel partner and I agree for once, the most beautiful fjord that we have ridden so far in Iceland. Actually, we didn't expect that much, even though people told me the west fjords are the most beautiful ones. I think this fjord here beats them. I have no word for this. It's just like a fairy tale surrounding waterfalls are coming down. Everything is green. You have a mountain to ride. You ride right on the water. It's like motorcycle dreams coming true. I tell you, even though we are doing this a second time, this ride over the mountain here is stunning. And it's actually really fascinating that with the different light at the moment, you see there is a bit more shade now everywhere. And the time of the day, it really feels completely different than the first time. It's very, very different atmospheres. Guys, that was it. We are soon hitting the tarmac again and we have actually booked a room for tonight in a small town um, here on the East Fjords. We did that while we had the waffles and for celebrating our last night here in the East before moving south to Iceland's biggest attractions, we wanted to find a nice place and today it actually worked out. I guess it's our lucky day or maybe it's because of the birthday of my travel partner. From Moifjordo, we hit the ring road number one to continue our ride south, but only to soon turn into another fjord. So this is the next little town here on our journey. I guess it's another day, another little town. And from a first impression, it does feel a little bit more industrial than some of the other places we stayed, but we will see. During the late 19th and early 20th century, Fjordur was one of the main Icelandic fishing stations for the French, and the evidence is still visible today. Street signs appear in both Icelandic and French, and traditional French games like pétanque are still played during the town's French Day Summer Festival at the end of July. We stayed at the Foss Hotel East Fjords. The hotel was renovated in 2016 and is in a historic building from 1903 that was used as a hospital for French fishermen. The hotel was nice, but before all I would like to recommend another place to you guys. The family-owned Café Sumalina, because the food was good, but also because the owner is a real character. Guys, if you ever travel to Iceland, I hope Moifjordo will be high on your list. And if you don't, I hope you like this episode and give it a thumbs up and comment. From the next episode on, we will start to visit the part of Iceland you probably have heard most of. Black beaches, dramatic mountains mirroring in the water and a climate that is full of surprises. Tune in next Thursday to join the ride.